Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. This is a master class video on the topic of the art of solving equations. And uh, due to the fact that there are so many different kinds of equations, uh, I thought it may be better if I divide this into uh, sm uh, the topic into smaller chunks. Uh, so that I can make uh, a number of videos uh, that are short uh, or at least shorter in duration uh, and, uh, and this one would be the first one in the series then. Uh, and when it comes to the different kinds of equations that we have uh, it's, uh, it's good to have uh, some kind of road map in front of us uh, so that at any point in time you know uh, where you are and where you are headed uh, what you know and what you still need to know uh, and uh, when it comes to classifying equations so that we can have this kind of roadmap, uh, I think uh, the, the best way to classify them uh, is by beginning with equations that have only, where there is only one equation, and that equation has only one unknown, and that only one operation applies to the unknown. And uh, when we think about the different kinds of equations that we come across, we notice that uh, the simplest types of equations that we come across uh, these are direct superposition kinds of problems uh, and they are the kinds of problems where we, uh, where we add x. So we have some number and then we add x to it and then we get some other number. You notice that we have one equation, that equation has one unknown and there is one operation, addition, that applies to the unknown. Following this, uh, the next most complex kinds of problems that we solve uh, are known as inverse superposition problems. And these problems are the kinds of problems where we subtract x. So again, we have one equation which has only one unknown, that would be x, and, uh, and we are subtracting that unknown. And, and again, you notice that there is a single operation that applies to the unknown. <clears throat> And then following this, uh, the next most complex kinds of problems that we come across are known as direct proportion problems. And these are the kinds of problems where uh, x is being multiplied by. Uh, there is one equation which has one unknown, and uh, there is one operation that applies to the unknown. In this case, that operation is multiplication. And uh, we follow this approach, and then we, uh, I would say that the next most complex kinds of problems that we solve are inverse proportion problems. And these are the kinds of problems where we divide by x. Now we can go on, uh, we can talk about uh, power functions where there is an unknown that goes to a known exponent. Uh, we have exponentials uh, where there is a, a constant such as four and that goes to the power of an unknown. Power functions and exponentials are, are have different behaviors by the way. Uh, we can talk about logarithmic functions uh, and we can talk about more. We can talk about uh, trigonometric functions such as uh, sine, cosine uh, and so on. Uh, so these are the, the simplest kinds of problems that we come across. And uh, of course uh, we, can, we can make uh, the game uh, more complicated. For example, instead of having one operation, we can have multiple operations. And, uh, and if we take a look at some of, some of the examples of problems where there are multiple operations being applied to the unknown, uh, we'll, find that, uh, we'll find equations such as 3 plus 2x equals 7. Now you notice that there are two operations that apply to, to the syntactic entities that have x in them. Uh, so for example, 2 is being multiplied by x, uh, so we are multiplying by x. Uh, multiplication would be one operation and that one is being applied to x directly and then the term that x is a part of is being added and so uh, we, we sort of see this as multiple operations uh, working on x uh, and, uh, and so we have, uh, we have these kinds of equations we can instead of having instead of having one operation we can have multiple operations uh, here's another example of a problem with multiple operations now uh, we are squaring x and then the term down here that's, uh, that x is a part of, uh, we add, uh, add it to 1 and then we also divide by the result of that. So three different operations uh, either directly or indirectly are being applied to uh, syntactic components of this expression uh, that has x in them. Uh, in addition to multiple operations we can also talk about uh, 
multiple unknowns. Uh, some equations have multiple unknowns. Uh, for example, x plus y is equal to 3z minus 2. And uh, we can also have multiple equations uh, that we solve sim simultaneously. And uh, these are known as systems. Uh, an example of that is a system that has three equations. The first one, 2x minus 3y plus z equals negative 1. The second one, negative 2x plus 3y plus 5z equals 2. And then we have 3x plus 2y minus z. Uh, and I think the equality is missing there. My apologies, equals 7. Uh, now these are the, so so we can have one equation one unknown uh, one operation but we can also change that we can have multiple operations multiple unknowns multiple equations or uh, multiple of two of these uh, we may have multiple operations with multiple unknowns but one equation or we can have multiple uh, multiples of all three of them uh, a system which is multiple equations that has multiple unknowns and there are multiple operations that uh, that are at play so you notice that equations can become pretty complicated. Uh, but this gives us an idea as to where the starting point should be, direct superposition. And in fact, uh, because of the fact that uh, the first three kinds of problems are sort of like uh, very simple, we usually cover the, the first three uh, together. Uh, and any kind of problem that uh, has uh, either addition, subtraction, or multiplication by x, so you either add x or subtract x or you multiply by x, or it may be the case that you have a mix of those. Uh, so for example, 3 plus 2x, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, let me go back to that diagram. Okay, that's multiple unknowns, and we had multiple operations, this one. 3 plus 2x equals 7. Uh, here you notice that uh, we have a mix of addition and multiplication being applied to x. Uh, so, so these kinds of problems where we have a mix of direct superposition, inverse superposition, and direct proportion, uh, these ones are called linear functions. Uh, and these functions, uh, linear functions, by the way, linear functions may have only one of them. So direct superposition is an example of a linear problem on its own. Uh, inverse superposition on its own is an example of a uh, linear problem. Uh, but any mix of these, uh, such as mixing direct superposition and direct proportion, uh, which is what we have here, multiplication and addition, uh, these ones are also called linear equations. And the reason we call them linear is because when we graph them, we get straight lines in the plane. Uh, more on that later when we come to talk about graphing equations. Uh, the other equations that you see here, either on their own or mixed with any other ones, including the top three, uh, these are nonlinear equations. Their graphs are cur curves. And, uh, and these are usually the more complicated kinds of equations. As you can tell, addition is much easier than, say, exponentiation. Uh, and, uh, and when you mix them together, uh, you get so many different varieties of equations. In fact, uh, there are so many of them, and, and the majority of them are the kinds that we don't even know how to solve. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Okay, so our focus in this video will be on linear equations, how to solve problems where x is being added, subtracted, or multiplied by, or a mix of these. And, uh, and these, this also sets the stage for more complicated uh, equations that we will come across. Uh, you'll find that even when you work with more complicated equations, uh, the steps that we take to solve linear equations are uh, up here, here and there along the way. All right, uh, so here we'll talk about algorithms for solving a linear equation uh, in one unknown, with the unknown appearing only once throughout the equation. So let's take a look at this again, a linear equation. So either add x, subtract x, or multiply by x, multiply by x but not divide by x. That's nonlinear. Uh, or a mix of these, there is only one unknown, and the unknown appears only once throughout the equation. Uh, and for these kinds of problems, uh, the steps are actually pretty easy. Uh, basically, you solve for the term that contains the unknown, then you solve for the factor that contains the unknown, and you keep repeating steps one and two until you, you are done. Okay, now having said that, we need to talk about what it means when we say solve for something, solve for the term that contains the unknown, or solve for the factor that contains the unknown. 
and we need to talk about how do we solve for the term or how do we solve for the factor. So the phrase solve for something means that you need to determine its value. And when you solve an equation, uh, you basically, uh, what this means is that you have to isolate that thing on one side of the equation. Uh, how do we go about doing this? How do we isolate uh, something, whatever you want to solve for, on one side of the equation? And the answer is uh, there are two different uh, main lines of logic that people use. Uh, one is known as natural semantics, uh, which is the one that I recommend. And this one says uh, that you can always convert the main operation on one side of an equation to its inverse on the other side of that equation. So addition on one side of an equation becomes subtraction on the other side, uh, assuming that addition is the main operation. If you have, if multiplication is the main operation, then multiplication on one side turns into division on the other side. So that's one kind of logic that you can use. The other kind of logic uh, is uh, what, I, uh, what I call standard semantics. And this one says that you can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit about these two kinds of logic and see how they work. All right. Uh, so the uh, behind the uh, behind natural semantics, uh, the, when we say that uh, the main operation on one side of the equation turns into its inverse on the other side of the equation, if you think about uh, the problem, let me actually uh, take you to one example here. Let's say we want to solve x plus 4 equals 12. This is an example of a uh, direct superposition problem. And for this problem, uh, we see this as x. We add 4 to it, and we end up with 12. And, uh, and this corresponds to a kind of a forward process. So we could say that we have x, then we add 4 to it, and that gives us 12. Now, the next step in solving this equation would be to say that x is equal to 12 minus 4. So we take plus 4 on one side and turn it into minus 4 on the other side of the equation. By the sides of equation, uh, I mean relative to the equality sign. So plus 4 was on the left side of the equality sign, and it turns into minus 4 on the right side of the equality sign. And if you think about what's happening here, now we start with 12 and we subtract 4 to get x back and that would be the bottom path you start with 12 subtract 4 to get x so basically if i start with x add 4 to get 12 which is the top equation then i can start with 12 do the opposite operation subtract 4 to get x back and that's what this one says so that's one way to think about how this logic of one operation turns into its opposite on the other side of the equation works. Uh, another way to think about it is, uh, is by uh, thinking of uh, word problems whose equations turn into x plus uh, 4 equals 12. For example, I bought a pen and a notebook and paid $12 in total. The notebook cost $4. How much did I pay for the pen? And, uh, and so the cost of the pen, that would be x plus the cost of the notebook, which is $4, is equal to, to a total of $12. And if, you, uh, if your friend, let's say, asked you this question, you would probably say that to find how much you spent on the pen, you take the total and you subtract the cost of the notebook from it. Uh, and you can see how, how there is uh, so much meaning in, in this kind of move. So whether you want to think about this move making sense in the context of problems like this, or whether you prefer to uh, see it as forward and backward movements, or preferably both. Um, uh, this explains how the logic uh, behind natural semantics works. And also the, the terminology natural semantics uh, comes from the fact that this is the way we would naturally reason. Uh, if two things add up to a total, then one of them is total minus the other. Now the other approach, which is uh, standard semantics <clears throat> so here we get 12 minus 4 and x becomes 8 now in standard semantics uh, the way we uh, reason is by saying now we still have to see the problem as 
uh, as four being added so that's something you have to train yourself uh, to see it like that uh, but now if I want to solve for x, which means I want to isolate x, uh, to get rid of plus 4, I will subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. And so the next line becomes x plus 4 minus 4 is equal to 12 minus 4. So we subtract x from both sides of the equation. Now the logic behind this kind of uh, step is, uh, is uh, based on a, on a balance. This is a good analogy. So when we say x plus 4 is equal to 12, we are making uh, a sort of like a, a statement uh, saying that uh, the, the two of them balance, the two of them are the same. Uh, and so uh, they, would, they would sort of balance as you can see in the diagram over here. And if these two balance, we can remove equal amounts from both sides and keep the balance. Uh, and, uh, and of course, if we want to isolate x, we need to remove 4 from both sides. Uh, and that's the kind of logic that goes into standard semantics. The one problem that I have with standard semantics, uh, actually two problems that I have, uh, one is uh, a question of efficiency. So let me actually uh, continue by writing the solution down under, under the equation here. So x plus 4 minus 4 equals 12 minus 4, and x becomes equal to 8. So for one thing, you notice that the solution using natural semantics uh, is, is more efficient because we don't have the plus 4 minus 4. And while it may not be a big issue now, uh, this will become an issue when equations become more complicated and when you work with uh, complicated formulas. So one major advantage of natural semantics is that it is more efficient. Uh, the other reason that natural semantics works better is because it, uh, it answers the question uh, when you solve word problems using natural semantics. The kind of logic that goes into the steps sort of map onto the kind of logic that you would naturally use. Uh, so again, going back to the problem of the pen and the notebook, uh, if the pen and the notebook uh, cost a total of $12, then the cost of the pen is 12 minus the cost of the notebook. Uh, whereas standard semantics would, would be strange. Uh, if I try to sort of apply it to this problem, then I have to say if the cost of the pen and the notebook equals $12, then to find the cost of the pen, subtract the cost of the notebook from both sides of the equation. Uh, this is not the way we would naturally reason. And, uh, and it is much better because, you, look, in the end, uh, we use math to talk. And, uh, and if I use the kind of logic that's not natural, uh, then it becomes an issue later on when I want to make sense of what's being done. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that standard semantics is useless. Uh, the more approaches that you know, the better for you. The more people you can talk to, the more connections your brain makes. Uh, so that's what I recommend. But there is one that you should always know, and that's the most efficient and meaningful approach. So I'm hoping that you will adopt the use of natural semantics. And in the videos that follow, uh, I will by and large follow natural semantics. Uh, initially, for the most basic problems, I will make a note on, uh, on the use of both approaches. But by and large, I will stick to natural semantics. And there's the balance. All right. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching this uh, introductory video, and I'll see you in the next video in which uh, we will take up the topic of solving the basic equations. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll apply the algorithm that I put, uh, put forward in this video, uh, where we solve for the term that contains the unknown and then solve for the factor that contains the unknown, and then repeat the process until it's done. Uh, we'll take that up in the next video.